uh hey so i want to finish this uh, topic so i'm sorry but i'll finish this topic today and i have to move on with the next topic so let's wait one more minute and then we'll start from where we left all right so um i was talking about enzyme concentration enzymes as enzymes increases right the substrate as enzymes increase right so let's say i had 10 enzymes from 10 i go to 20 enzymes but my substrate concentration would remain the same so when the substrate concentration remains the same i don't have enough substrate to bind to the enzyme uh, enzyme activity enzyme uh, active site so when i don't have enough in substrates to bind with the active site my enzyme reactivity would decrease so the rate of reaction becomes constant because i don't have enough substrates to bind with the active site so remember if enzyme concentration increases my react uh, rate of reaction would decrease and the third thing that affects enzyme activity is temperature. At low temperatures, right? Uh, basically, this uh, this uh, theory is that at high temperatures, at high temperatures, the the proteins, right? Remember, I told you proteins have four structures, and the tertiary and secondary structure, right, can be affected by temperature changes. So if I I have a temperature change, if I have high temperature, then the tertiary and secondary bonds, uh, the structures would break because they have hydrogen bonds. So when these two break, the enzyme would denature. Denature basically means that the active site is no longer complementary to the active site is no longer complementary to the substrate. So uh, this causes the enzyme activity to stop and the rate of reaction would decrease to zero. So at high temperatures, uh, at high temperatures, the enzyme denatures and this would cause the reactivity to stop. But at optimum temperature, right? At optimum temperature, the enzyme works uh, the best. They have uh, a lot of substrate and uh, active site would uh, form. So at optimum temperature, the re rate of reaction would be the highest. So the rate of reaction is highest at the optimum temperature. At high temperatures, hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds start to break. So the active site changes shape and the enzyme becomes denatured. Yeah, pretty basic. So uh, the fourth thing which affects uh, enzyme activity is the pH. Uh, it's very similar to the temperature changing co uh, concept. When you have uh, a change in pH, this will cause the, the tertiary and secondary structure to break because, again, they have hydrogen bonds. So at high uh, pH, the hydrogen bonds break. So uh, the rate of reaction would decrease to zero. Why is this? Because uh, pH is a measure of concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. So if the pH is high, this would mean that uh, you have a low concentration of H plus ions. But at low pH, you will have high concentration of H plus ions. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to inhibitors. What is inhibitors? There are two types of inhibitors the competitive inhibitors which would bind to the active site and temporarily block the substrate from binding to the active site. So what is the role of inhibitors? Inhibitors would uh, stop the enzyme activity. 
So the first one is the competitive, competitive inhibitor. This inhibitor would is complementary to the active site. So what it does is this inhibitor, right, would bind to the active site and it would block the substrate from binding to the active site. So now the inhibitor is binding to the active site Substrate can no longer bind to the active site and the enzyme activity stops. But non-competitive inhibitors bind to the part of enzyme. So they don't bind to the in act active site. Instead, they uh, bind to the enzyme itself and they change the shape of, of the active site. And this would cause uh, this would cause permanent changes, whereas competitive inhibitors they cause temporary uh, change, uh, temporary inhibitors inhibition. Because remember that competitive inhibitors, right? They can uh, they can leave the active site so that substrate can bind, but this is not the case for non-competitive inhibitors. So non-competitive right inhibitors, what they do is they bind to the to the enzyme. This causes the enzyme to change shape. Now the enzyme looks something like this. So now it's no longer complementary to the to the substrate. So the substrate can no longer bind to the active site. And this change is permanent. You can't undo the change. Yeah, permanent. I wrote the wrong spelling. Ignore this. So it's permanent. Yeah. So um, increasing inhibition. Yeah. So increasing inhibitors. Uh, inhibitor concentration decreases the rate of reaction. That is very obvious. Uh, so how do you immob uh, immobilize enzymes? Immobilizing enzyme can be done by attaching them to an insoluble inert material which forms a gel capsule around it. So if you form, if you bind the enzyme to an uh, insoluble and inert material, this will form a gel capsule around it. So you can uh, put the enzyme in a gel ca capsule and so this process enables the enzyme to be reused again and again. Uh, this is used in industrial processes because it's very cheap and you don't have to make new enzymes. Uh, so this will uh, save you a lot of money. So immobilizing enzymes are done in industrial processes. Yeah. And is there, a, is there anything else? Uh, yeah. So the last thing for enzymes is the rate of reaction and what is the rate of reaction it's the speed of conversion of the substrate into product so this uh, rate at which the reactants are becoming products is known as the rate of reaction and uh, enzymes are very good at reducing the rate uh, increasing the rate of reactions so enzymes increase the process through which reactants become products and so this is why enzymes are very important because they increase the conversion of reactant to products. So how do you find the rate of reaction? I, there is a, uh, you first measure the product formation. You can measure the products formed and you plot a time graph. So time and concentration graph. And then you find the gradient of the curve and that would be your rate of reaction. So the gradient, which is rise over run, would give you the rate of reaction. So this would give you rate of reaction. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that was um, rate of reaction. So uh, remember that at the y-axis, you'll have the uh, dependent value. And at the x-axis, you'll have the independent value. Dependent value. So what is the dependent value here? Uh, it's the concentration. Because the concentration depends on the time. If you leave the if you leave the reaction longer, it would make more concentration of products. If you, if you stop the reaction very early, then the concentration of reactants, uh, the products would be very low. And so concentration here would be the dependent. So it would be on the y-axis. So concentration is always on the y-axis. Time is independent. You can change the time as you like. You can 
make the reaction for 50 seconds or 50 minutes doesn't matter so if time is independent therefore it's found in the x axis so time would always be on the x axis yeah and rise over run basically means that concentration over time would give you the rate of reaction yeah so do i have anything else i don't hmm. yeah so that was basically today's class sorry i had to continue the class because i want to finish this topic so uh let me just zoom in on the syllabus. So we are we are done with the uh, the chemistry of living things. To, uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll start bioenergetic. This is also very interesting. Uh, so see you all tomorrow. Bye.